uh, it will be my pleasure uh, to present uh, you uh, the first release, uh, first public release of a tool that uh, I've been working on, which approaches the topic of uh, Scala scripting um, in quite a novel way that I haven't seen uh, done before. Mm -hmm. uh, just let me uh, switch to my slides. And I guess uh, you can see the slides right now. <clears throat> so, uh, thank you. Uh, the first, um, I'm going to uh, do a bit of introduction. Um, why uh, did I even start to look at the topic? Um, why should one care about Scala scripting, actually? Because this is something that is, um, let's face it, not very popular. Um, we've got uh, some coverage in Scala tooling for it, but uh, people uh, choose um, other languages uh, on the daily basis. Uh, so Scala is nowhere near popular for scripting as uh, Bash and Python. And um, uh, first, uh, I would like to um, go over uh, the state of the art in Scala scripting. How does it work right now? Why uh, does one even uh, want to um, use uh, Scala for scripting? Um, then I will try to highlight some pain points uh, that I've experienced and uh, that motivated me to actually um, to actually do something and create what I created. Uh, then um, I'm going to present you the tool, which is called TSK, or the scripting kit. And um, I would demo it to you. Uh, I would uh, show you how it works. And then um, I count on a fruitful discussion full of criticism, uh, good ideas. Uh, so uh, this is the part that uh, I'm looking forward most to. And let me start. So this is um, how the Scala code ecosystem might be pictured. Um, on one hand, you've got uh, some tools devoted to exploration. Uh, you can uh, use um, things like uh, Ammonite REPL, SCSTI, Polynode, Elmont, Scala Fiddle to run some short Scala snippets uh, to learn how would Scala behave, what would be output of some experiment to also process some chunks of data and um, this is um, useful for uh, learning. This is um, instant in editing and running. You simply go to like Scala Fiddle, type some Scala code, run it, you see the result. Uh, the code is often one off. Um, it can be often easily shared with others, uh, but uh, well, the usage uh, of that code is limited. You basically um, run it within a specialized tool. Um, and uh, well, regarding the code structure, it has um, basically ad hoc structure uh, most of the time. So on the other side of the spectrum is what Scala is known best from. So uh, this is um, all big applications uh, which involve ACA clusters. Uh, usage of Kafka, distributed systems, uh, big data processing systems, um, many enterprise applications uh, that are rich in structure. Um, you typically um, build a system for repeated use. It is certainly not a one-off thing. Uh, the systems uh, perform big and complex tasks. Um, so the development of uh, such apps is uh, very involved. Uh, you use um, basically build tools like uh, SBT, MIL, 
Fury, numerous others. Uh, you carefully choose uh, your dependencies, uh, set of plugins that manage all the life cycle of the app. And um, well, um, it is the most powerful form, uh, but it's also with the most tax on you in terms of development overhead. And in the middle, uh, there is uh, scripting, uh, which is for often small task, uh, but the scripts um, have some simple structure and are meant to be used repeatedly. For example, some um, internal company automation. Sometimes you just need a script uh, that would uh, repeatedly upload some files to S3 bucket or to call some API in GitLab. Uh, so um, if you've got script, uh, you expect it to be easy in editing, running, and distributing. So what Scala uh, has uh, at the moment uh, are mainly two things. Uh, the Scala REPL shipped with the Scala distribution and also Ammonite scripts. So TSK, the scripting kit, uh, is a newcomer to this area. And let me tell you why. So one of the pain points of Scala scripting is that uh, Scala means most often JVM. This is something uh, that um, everybody um, from Scala developers expects um, as uh, something uh, present uh, on a system. Um, so um, we sometimes forget that there are some experts that are not into JVM, uh, not into Scala, uh, not into Scala tooling. And um, in many places, you simply don't have JVM, right? Uh, so for Scala scripting, uh, JVM is a necessity. Uh, you need to have a JVM, you need to install a REPL, be it Ammonite or the other one, and then you are able to run scripts. So, well, uh, you may ask, uh, what's the deal? Uh, give somebody an instruction uh, how to install JVM, how to install Ammonite, and you're done. But you know, um, yeah, it isn't that difficult, but if you compare it to Bash, where you don't really need to install anything, you don't need to install rep, you simply edit some script and you run it, um, then Bash uh, simply wins. If the task is uh, simple enough, uh, there is no sense to even involve Scala. So um, similar in Python, Python installation and library installation is obviously mandatory, but often uh, those things um, are on the target system. Uh, Python is quite popular. Uh, also, it has um, a philosophy of batteries included. So standard library lets you do much stuff already. So uh, often what you need is uh, that you uh, simply edit and run a script. So people go for Python and Bash um, uh, much more often than they go for Scala, which is a shame because uh, Scala uh, is a great language and uh, lets you uh, write things that you can uh, then evolve uh, safely. So the other thing uh, in uh, Scala scripting is that um, scripts are not regular Scala. Um, on one hand, um, this is a nice thing because you don't need to provide all the boilerplate. Uh, the REPL uh, does it for you. Uh, you just uh, write your code and it is automatically wrapped into classes. On the, uh, also, uh, you have magic imports in Ammonite that let you import whatever library you fancy. And um, you, some of the libraries are also shipped um, with uh, Ammonite by, by default. So you simply import it. Um, but this is a double-edged sword. Um, if you um, are happy with your script and something, something happens that you 
start to want to upgrade it into a proper app, you're, you are in a sort of a dead end because uh, you need to provide those old wrappers um, by hand. Uh, you need to um, sort out um, the extra dependencies and also you need to rewrite magic imports into a build tool conf uh, configuration. So here is where the TSK, the scripting kit comes. Uh, the subtitle is Trilly Standalone Scripts on Linux and Mac. Uh, I should add that it also runs on Windows uh, WSL, uh, uh, Linux uh, for Windows system. Uh, so um, it has a GitHub project. And the idea is that you run Scala as if it were Bash. So let me demo the script. And here I will show you a, a simple program. It is called URL grep. Um, the idea behind this program is to um, pipe some uh, text to it and it would uh, just output the URLs that are within it. Let me simply show you how does it look like. Uh, so this is um, Sim sim simple uh, Scala application. And uh, what happens if I run it? Echo, well, maybe uh, curl. Uh, I'm piping the contents of Scala Lang um, uh, site to the script. Notice that I simply use URL rep. And what happens? is that compilation happens and then uh, all links, uh, all URLs found in the sources of the pages page uh, get uh, displayed. So um, if, I, um, if I show you um, the file has the execute permission and it can be simply executed by bash. So um, you may, um, ask um, how does it uh, happen? Mm, so let me uh, show you if I open the URL grep. The first line uh, is a Scala comment, right? So mm, all IDEs uh, are happy about it. There is uh, no uh, something like magic import here. Uh, well, this, um, this line is um, called a preamble in TSK vocabulary. And it contains out of shell commands. In this case, um, there are four shell commands uh, separated by semicolons. Uh, you may ask, what is this one, right? So uh, let me try to uh, see. Home is directory, uh, root is the root directory. If I append second slash to the root, it is also a directory. What happens if I try to run uh, something like this? It is an error, obviously. Uh, what happens if I uh, do this? The error message will be suspe suspended. So um, what? Um, how does it work? Is that uh, basically this is an invalid uh, shell command but uh, shell doesn't care and simply uh, goes to execute the other stuff. So um, the, other, uh, the other command is sourcing of some shell code. So um, what happens here is that uh, curl is downloading a short script, boot TSK, which is um, TSK bootstrapper executes it using sh and um, the effect of the execution is a path to newly installed shell script on your disk and this script is sourced. Um, the script on the disk is tsk. tsk is basically a shell functions library. So when you source it, some definitions um, are uh, introduced into the current scope. So um, 
the most useful definition is RAM. And RAM, uh, how does it, uh, what, what does it do? Is that it downloads Coursier, uh, downloads um, Java development kit using uh, Coursier, downloads all the required dependencies, uh, downloads Bloop, compiles uh, the script with Bloop, and then executes Java using exec primitive. Uh, so uh, the whole script is replaced uh, by uh, Java. So normally the exit at the end isn't needed, but uh, this is a last resort exit in case anything on the left-hand side would fail. So uh, this is uh, one uh, case of the preamble um, that uh, is simply um, designed uh, to be uh, easily used uh, by um, whoever wants, um, even from memory, but um, uh, you can do it uh, in other way. Uh, for example, uh, there is lots of people that um, oppose uh, the idea of basically running curl and piping the output into SH. Um, I will happily debate anyone uh, who would object to this idea, but I know that uh, there is lots of people that uh, are allergic to it. Uh, so uh, the alternative is that the TSK is already downloaded to disk, but then um, it also works, but it isn't, um, well, self-installable then. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, well, basically um, you end up with um, a Java app, uh, which is executed in uh, basically uh, very, very simple way. So um, to demonstrate you that um, this would work um, on a system that doesn't have Java, doesn't have anything, I will run this source um, into a Docker container. With a fresh Fedora image. So Java, not found. Uh, then uh, let me simply save that script. Yeah, let me ex uh, make it executable. And uh, let me basically do um, something similar. And um, TSK will be working. Mm. It will uh, take a couple of minutes because as you can see, uh, the JVM uh, was not on the machine. So uh, Coursier needs to uh, download it. Uh, now the bloop needs to be downloaded. So um, let, let's uh, give it a bit of time until it uh, finally finishes. But in the meantime, uh, let me demonstrate one useful thing. Uh, so um, as I mentioned, uh, TSK um, compiles the sources using a bloop. Uh, and uh, what happens uh, is that, oh, you can see it completed already. It was quite fast. I didn't expect that. And you can see that the next time you run it, everything is cached. Uh, so um, everything is compiled, etc. So uh, we are basically fine. Uh, so um, what TSK does is it generates bloop config. So uh, you can see the bloop directory and um, it is basically uh, sufficient to get all IDE support that you would expect uh, when you want to edit the script. So let me run code in this directory. Uh, see. Mm. Everything is uh, highlighted properly. Uh, this is a valid um, Scala Bloop project. I can um, jump to the definitions. For example, here, let me try. Yeah, I am in sources, right? Uh, so uh, this is the 
central idea behind, uh, behind TSK. Um, you prepend uh, a special preamble that makes your script immediately executable. No installations of Java, no installations of any tools like Ammonite. It all happens in background. So now, if you work with some Python expert, uh, which who is expert in machine learning, but um, that person is not into Scala, not even into JVM world. Uh, and um, you want to uh, give that person some short program written in Scala that that person would be able to run. It is not harder than just handing out this piece of text. Also, uh, if you're a library author and want to uh, show some examples of your library, you can uh, make those examples instantly executable for your users. They would just download the examples, they would run them immediately on their machines. So um, that's right. that's a just really quickly, could you move your terminal windows up just a sec and um, just a um, slightly, please? Apparently, the um, the prompt the prompt at the bottom of the screen is not visible. All right, all right. Well, that should be better. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, just to demonstrate, um, I would uh, basically uh, run any sort of uh, site that you would like to see uh, where Carol. Uh, I'm picking uh, this site because I know it contains lots of uh, URLs. Mm, not sure if google.com would work too. Maybe not because uh, the code is that, no, it actually had one link, right? The link is uh, google.com. Uh, so, um, what um, is um, well? Uh, what is supported in TSK um, is the dependencies. Uh, this is uh, the greatest part right now. Um, dependencies uh, you configure it using um, uh, environment variable named uh, well nomen omen dependencies, right? So uh, let me uh, demonstrate that to you. So um, let me close the. Oh, maybe let me not close it yet. Um, let me show you some other example. Yeah, I've got a HTTP server, right? Serve lines. Well, uh, see what I did here. Uh, previously, the preamble was just one line, but now it spans multiple lines. Uh, how did I did it? So the first um, part of the TSK preamble, um, I call it Scala compiler pacifier because uh, it um, causes the Scala compiler to not freak out when it sees shell commands, uh, is um, the original line, but with escape um, near the new, new line. So the command continues to the second line. The second line is basically uh, what Scala understands as an opening of block command. And that way we can easily uh, have a preamble uh, that can have multiple different entries. So uh, just to uh, give you idea, dependencies is the most important part. Uh, here, uh, I specified just one library, uh, Cask of Li Haoyi, uh, who, who work I admire, I'm a great fan of Singapore stack. And uh, I love this philosophy. Um, so um, I've used uh, his uh, library and um, I specified Scala version. Uh, you can also specify Java versions. You can specify Bloop and Coursier versions that you want to use. Uh, it doesn't support um, the nice reproducibility options that uh, Alex uh, has mentioned um, on uh, his talk. Uh, but um, 
thanks to um, the dependencies, uh, well, the loop configuration is basically uh, done in a different way. Well, it just uh, contains the dependencies. So if I run uh, code here, uh, I will show you that uh, I would be able to go not only to the definition of uh, standard libraries, but also to definitions of things that uh, are within other libraries that are imported. So um, for now, I can uh, see uh, some problems, but uh, let me check if, uh, no, I can go to definition. Um, I'm not really sure why uh, is it displaying the problems. Um, let me uh, try to refresh uh, to, to make sure basically if um, this is uh, the right, um, the, the, the config, the blue config is up to date. I will run it by um, running the server. Serve lines basically um, serves the lines um, passed to it as a standard input. So maybe I will pipe this uh, command to it. So in another window, I would need to use curl. to get the first line, the second line, the third line, and so on and so on. So um, we can see that the server is running. Let me break it. Let me, let me uh, run the code uh, again. Uh, uh, if it still uh, displays the red squiggles, then uh, I will need to take a look. But um, hopefully, no, um, yeah, I need to take a look. Um, what can be the reason really. Um, let me try to open it in idea instead. Well, is idea finished? Uh, I think so. Yeah, idea is um, better for for that case. Um, idea doesn't, doesn't display red squiggles. Yeah, um, I will need to investigate uh, what is the reason. Uh, but um, well, uh, since uh, this is um, near the end of my talk, um, Ash, I would uh, only want to um, tell you that um, similar like. Um, you have ability to split your scripts into uh, several files. You also can do it um, in TSK, uh, but uh, you've got a special uh, source uh, variable uh, where you uh, specify um, where are the other sources. Uh, but uh, I won't demonstrate it to you uh, right now uh, because lack of time. Um, you can also uh, use um, um, your own repositories, like uh, in company, you often have your internal um, repository for uh, artifacts. So you can easily use your published internal libraries uh, for scripting. Um, also, you can specify some uh, weird proxy parameters um, for um, access to the repository. Uh, so um, this is fully working. And um, what um, I have in the plans uh, for TSK is that uh, you would be able uh, to actually use Graal VM to compile your scripts into native uh, binaries. So um, when you run your script, uh, you the, the, the compilation happens and then the next, the subsequent runs are super fast and have a tiny memory footprint and uh, start up uh, fast. Uh, so that is one uh, of the plans. Uh, the other plan is that since you can see that um, the Scala code is normal one without all the magic, all uh, tools uh, are, well, basically um, expected uh, to work with that without much problems. Uh, as you could see, uh, it isn't always the case, uh, but um, in, in my experience, it worked for me uh, quite well so far. Uh, and it should be much, much easier to uh, scale up your script into a proper application. 
So the next uh, option that I want uh, to add to TSK is basically export to mil config and export to SBT config. So um, if you created a prototype uh, that uh, initially um, didn't justify investment into all the software engineering things like uh, pi build pipeline configurations, uh, like um, even SBT, uh, it was uh, meant to be a throwaway, but uh, it proved its worth over time. Uh, you would be able to easily um, upscale it uh, to a proper application with a proper build tool uh, with all of that. So um, I want to do it. Uh, this, this is, um, in my opinion, important to be able to start small, to not invest much, uh, but then to evolve it uh, into a bigger thing easily. Um, well, um, a part of this, um, um, there might be um, a thing that would be needed to support Windows, um, uh, but uh, obviously Windows doesn't uh, have a shell, uh, at least not, with, um, not without a Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, so um, I, I think about uh, adding uh, some TSK CLI app that could be used on Windows. Um, and well, uh, I think that's, uh, that's it. Um, let me uh, basically um, go to uh, credits. Uh, so I really wanted to appreciate and say thank you to all authors and contributors of Coursier, Loop, Ammonite, Scala, JVM, and Unix. Also to all people that gave me feedback and also my, to my friends from Hello Soda uh, for supporting me and giving me feedback and also providing me uh, generous uh, time in terms of 10% project time for, for doing that. And thank you. Uh, this is the URL of the project. Um, I'm Przemek Pokrywka on Twitter. Uh, 